Hey, hey guys, welcome to Own Your Shit with Jen Carrasco. And like always, please like, share, review. Um, but today I have one badass on the show. And I'm just going to do this and let him introduce himself. Um, phenomenal. So before, before he gives an intro to himself, I want to give my intro of what I've seen with, with Mr. Drewby. Um, when I joined Apex, uh, it, it's been a great journey. And just to see where you were in the beginning when we like started to where you are now, I mean, it's a completely different version and it's a great version. It's like a, it's a grown up version. And I don't mean it that you weren't grown up before, but it was, it was an owning your shit version. Like I see Drewby now and he's sitting next to me, like in our apex meetings or our coaches corners. And it's to see you stand there with the confidence that you have and the confidence of helping other people. I just don't know if you acknowledge that you have that now, but when I look at you, I see just this man that owns his shit right now. He is just dominant and he's perseverant and he's pushing and he's helping. And I, and I see that within yourself, but I also see that within your family and your, your wife is a doll and just the growth that you both have had within, I would say what it's been like two years that I've seen. Um, I, I just want to say that it's awesome. It's awesome to be able to witness it and be next to you and see that. So with that introduction, I want to introduce Drewby and I'm going to let in- Drewby kind of give his shindig about himself. So take it on over, brother. Well, shush, Jen. I really appreciate those super kind words. Um, It's been a a journey for sure. It's been really fun to not only go on it personally, but like you said, to bring my wife along, to bring my son along and really, you know, own my shit to being who I am today and, and hopefully who I'm destined to become in the future, right? Because we're not stopping here. We're always striving to get better. So who am I? Uh, Drewby Wilson, VP here at Break Free Academy, a eight figure sales producer, best selling author, podcast host, coach, speaker, you know, all the cool things that I've done, but still get a little bit of uh, humility talking about like it's I'm still trying to own all of those things. It's funny you would bring that up. It's been a personal journey of mine recently really stepping into this newer version of myself because, you know, I used to weigh 300 pounds. I used to sit at a desk and wear khakis and sell insurance and, you know, just never quite found my calling up until the last few years. Like I've always wanted to serve and help people, but I I think I've really found like where I'm supposed to be and, and being able to stand at the front of the room with, you know, incredible business owners and entrepreneurs that are as successful as yourself and some of our other executive coaches, like, it is a very big deal to me because, you know, I, I never really had a whole lot growing up. My mom was a single mom and she did the best to raise three boys. And so we kind of made our way through, through life. And, you know, to be at this point now where I get a chance to lead and serve the community around me, especially within apex, but more importantly, be the example for my wife and for my son to, to be better. And, and their examples for me too, that's the best part is that we're all growing and owning this together. Um, it, it's truly an amazing feeling, and I'm just excited to have an opportunity to share some of that story and, and you know, be a part of the journey of so many others like yourself that are, you know, we're, we're always working to get better. And it's, it's cool because I talk about, you know, <clears throat> especially on sales calls, like we all operate with a giver's gain mentality. We're very much OK saying, hey, I don't know what I don't know. But what I'm an expert at, I will give it with abundance because when I pour into the cups of others, it's just making room for people to pour into my cup. And so, uh, you know, I'm just grateful to be here, excited to have some time to chat with you and really see what kind of value we can provide to the listeners. Because inevitably, there's if only one person hears this and and is able to take something and, and make a change in their life that helps them, then it was all worth it. Absolutely. 
So with that, I'm going to dig in a little bit. So I like to know people's stories. I like to know people's backgrounds and so do other people. I think it's inspiring and it pushes other people to actually uh, get out of their own way and do shit in life. Um, What made you make that transition from khakis, selling insurance to kind of, you know, taking that breath and just saying, fuck it, I'm going to do it. Um, like share that experience. Yeah. So that moment, I mean, it's a series of moments, but like, I can remember I used to sell insurance. Right. And so I was a a top sales producer at our agency in our market, in our region. I was always in the top five. I mean, all state corporate was actually asking me to come and speak to their, their agents and, and talk about how myself solo was doing as much as many agencies were doing in production. And so I kind of reached this point where I felt <clears throat> very unfulfilled. Like I was working hard and I was getting all these accolades and these awards for what I was doing in our area. But, you know, full transparency, I was making like four grand a month. I was busting my hump, working 50, 60 hours a week. And God love the agent that I worked for, who was a, a family member. And, and I really respect and appreciate the opportunity he created. But like, it kind of felt like I was making him rich, right? Like he was coming into the office for an hour, maybe two a day, and and basically just complaining about how all these other agencies were so much more successful than us. And I kind of was like, well, man, you know, you keep telling me I'm at the top of my game. Like, I'm not really happy working this much and not making what I think I should be. And he said to me, and God love him, unfortunately, he said, hey, man, just be patient. One day you're going to own one of these things and you're going to have your name on the door and you'll be, you'll be well to go, but you got to get there first. And probably the worst thing he could have said to me, cause I'm a very impatient person. So I, I immediately knew like, okay, it's time to make a change. I didn't know exactly what that change was, but my instant reaction was I'm in sales. If I want to make more money, I need to have more people to talk to. And so I went online and I started learning like, Hey, how are these Facebook, you know, gurus getting all these leads, all of these insurance guys making all these, you know, money on Facebook. So I started learning lead generation, had some success with that, decided, you know what, maybe there's an opportunity there. And and actually had some of the other agents that reached out to me and said, Hey man, you're like, all of a sudden your production went up even more than normal. Like clearly you're doing something over there. What's going on? So I was like, well, I got this new lead gen thing that I figured out on Facebook. It's crazy. Like I'm getting leads for dirt cheap and I'm selling them. And so I ended up selling a couple of like marketing consulting packages to some of these other agents. And over a weekend, I made eight grand selling marketing for insurance when I was making four grand a month selling actual policies. And I was like, well, this is, there's something going on here. Right. And Kind of at that same time, I was using phone site software that, you know, Ryan Stuman created that the the guy we all kind of follow. And he reached out to me and he said, hey, man, I I really like what you're doing in our group because I was just providing a lot of support and helping other members like, hey, this is what I'm doing this work in. If you want to try that, like, let me know. And uh, he said, hey, man, you're in the wrong business. Like, come down and spend a day with me. Let's have a conversation. Well, it was a kind of wild, like, yeah, all right. <laughs> and uh, so I flew down to, to have a convo with him and, and we spent the day talking and he kind of explained what we do here at Apex and how it works. And when I flew back, I sat down with the agent and I said, you know, hey, man, I've got this really good opportunity. And like, I, I don't want to leave you because you've really been a good, good supporter and helped me get here. But like, I, I really can't pass this up. And so yeah. I, I had agreed to stay and, and help him find somebody during the transition, right? I was like, hey, man, I'll stay. I'll, I'll teach whoever you bring in to do all the things that I'm doing. But like, I have to take this opportunity. Well, the Monday that he was supposed to come in and learn how to work the CRM and do all the stuff that I've been doing, he, he no call, no showed me. He's like, oh, I, got some, I got stuff to do. I, I can't be there. And so I packed up my desk and I walked out and said, all right, man, best of luck to you. And I basically called Ryan back and said, all right, man, I'm full-time. When do I start? And nice. here, we are. <laughs> nice. here we are. So what was the transition from working with somebody? How do I say this? Before we get there, let me go back. Working in that environment that you worked in, what were the, uh, what were the accolades that you took 
from that environment to the other environment? And how do you like integrate what you think works better for people? Because we always take something and we move it to the next one and say, you know what, I'm going to do this different and I'm going to do this better. And I'm going to help other people not feel the way that I felt. What do you feel like you did with transpiring that into Apex? So what I brought was, you know, I learned a lot about sales and follow-up and systems and processes at the agency, right? Like we would pay thousands of dollars a month to get these different leads. And so what I really brought was like, hey, man, there's a lot of opportunity, but there's not a lot of systemization to like staying in front of people and helping them get what they need. because. Mm -hmm. most industries, it's not an immediate buying process, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's a, there's a there's a timeline. And yeah. so what I really was able to bring over was that, that system and, and my kind of like process for staying in front of people. And basically like, if you come in as a lead to me now, you're going to get calls indefinitely until you buy or like you change phone number. Yeah. And so that was really for me was like, how can I step into this new role and this new opportunity and make sure that I'm just sharing anything and everything that's worked well for me in any situation, whether it was selling insurance or tobacco or furniture, I sold a lot of different shit over the years, but it was always based on how can I serve the client, right? Like yeah. what do they need? What problem are they facing? And how can I make sure that I'm resourceful enough to get them the information they need, whether they're going to buy or not, if I can just educate them, then that's going to give them what they need to eventually buy from me. And it was the same for insurance. It was like, Hey, you know, you're kind of underinsured. I understand you want to save money, but like you're not really saving money if something happens. And so that was always about educating and helping. And I think that was like the big thing that really helped me when I came to apex is because I didn't really have any expectation. It was more so like, Hey, here's the resources I've been giving to learn if I can give it to somebody else and help them learn, inevitably it always leads back to them wanting more, which is on the other side of that paywall. Yeah. Yeah, I can give you so much free stuff, but ultimately it's not until you invest in yourself that you're going to see the biggest results. And so I think that side of the service was really what I was able to bring in. That's kind of helped me exponentially grow in the last few years. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like, and what was the difference coming into Apex? What do you feel like when you got there, that it was home, like this was the place that I need to be. How can I expand? How can I help other people? How can I help Ryan? Like, what was that transition for you getting involved? I mean, because now it's, you're, you're definitely higher up, you know, you're, you're majority of the company, working the company, helping people, guiding people. What was that transition for you? You know, it's funny. Cause when I started with, with Apex, I literally was just a tech support guy. It was like, hey, man, answer emails and and help get people their logins and shit if they need it. And so like for me, what I really fell in love with was kind of that light bulb moment when I would have a conversation with somebody and I'd give them a resource or I'd give them some kind of information and they would come back a few weeks later or a couple of days later and be like, hey, man, I did that thing you told me to do and it definitely worked. What do I do now? And so like just that constant, like giving value and helping somebody and getting to see that moment in them and, and see how they were able to change their life and, and just knowing internally the ripple effect that that causes, like, hey, I helped you make an extra 500 bucks this month. And while 500 bucks may not sound like a lot to some people, that could be like the difference between them having a great Christmas and a shitty Christmas or them paying their rent or not paying their rent, right? And so just that side of it really stood out to me. And then just knowing that everything that was possible was there in front of me for the taking, like literally anything that I wanted to do or be able to achieve, it was like the the door was open and it was like, Hey man, it's out there. What do you want to do? Yeah. I feel like, and I mean, you can disagree with me if you want to, but I feel like when you finally open the the door or the gate or whatever you want to call it to actually helping somebody and being passionate about it and loving it and enjoying the process of helping somebody. We all have our gifts, right? We all have our God gifts that were created for us. And it's almost like once we find that gift that we have and we can share it and expand and help other people, 
that it just like opens up the doors for so many opportunities that you don't realize that are there. And I think a lot of people um, get too scared or they get too frightened about what if this happens? What if that happens? Well, what if you just trust yourself and say, you know what, I'm making the right decision because it feels good and I'm doing a good thing. And when you do that and you open up, I feel like it all just starts to come in. Like, yeah, I think it's a hundred percent about owning your confidence and, and mostly it's imposter syndrome, right? Like one of the conversations I have day in and day out, whether it's somebody that's paying three grand a year to work with us or a hundred grand a year to work with us, it's always the same conversation of, I don't know if I'm good enough, or I don't know if I belong in that room. And I think finding ways internally to get around that feeling, whether you call it imposter syndrome or whatever you want to call it, I mean, that is the key to unlocking whatever greatness is inside of you. Yeah. And I, I think for me, it was really about understanding that all of those feelings that I get of imposter syndrome of our, do I belong or had, you know, is what I've done good enough to really like compare to other people? First of all, comparisons will kill you. Like that's always a hard thing to get around, but we are always doing it. So it's, again, it's about rewiring the trigger and the, the reaction to it. But I was like, I had a conversation with somebody and they said, Hey, if you feel that way, it's because you have a core value of integrity. You never want to stand in front of someone and give them advice or give them information that's going to lead them down the wrong path. And that's really something to be celebrated. Yeah. Right. If you feel that way, it's because you care about how other people get on, whether it's, you know, they're successful in their personal life or their business or whatever. You just want to make sure that they have what they need to survive and be successful. And so that's actually an okay feeling to have as long as you don't let it prevent you from taking that step. Right. So many people will go, well, if I leave this opportunity, I'm leaving the comfort of like this paycheck every two weeks. And, you know, like I got to kind of, you know. Yeah. Hey, but if you don't ever step out of the comfort zone, you're never giving yourself a chance to earn what what's really out there. So it's yeah. you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You yeah. might as well give it a try and see, you know, why not? Yeah, I like that. I like that. So I want to get back a little bit because I know a lot of people um are in the process of wanting to write a book. You know, it's been something that's been on their mind. So what was the thing that pushed you to write your book, by the way, crushing the day, what, what, what was your go-to to do this? Um, aside from wanting to get it done before everybody else got theirs done. <laughs> uh, no, the, the truth is I knew that it was part of becoming this next version of myself, right? If I want to grow, I have to be able to, I had to be able to share what got me to that point when I had written the book. Right. And it was, at that time, kind of like the, the apex of my life. I was like making the most money. I was the most successfully in my fitness and my relationships, my mindset. So I knew that to take that next step, I had to take all of the things that I had experienced and learned and I had to put them somewhere so that I could close the chapter on that part of my life to start on the next chapter. Because the book's not over. It's just getting good. Mm-hmm. But it, I, I kind of had to have that point. And so again, it was for me, it was kind of like, there are people out there who are in the position that I was in before I made that leap of entrepreneurship and and really kind of stepping into this next version. And so I just wanted them to see, first of all, Hey, I'm just a regular dude that didn't, you know, have anything special as far as like, I didn't go to college. I barely graduated high school I'm covered in tattoos head to toe. So like, I'm definitely unemployable from that side of things, but I just wanted them to know, like, it's okay. There, if you're in that feeling of like plateaued or kind of like, man, I'm working hard. Why am I struggling to get ahead? People go through that. So I just wanted to share kind of like my mindset and what I had going on when I was at that point and some of the little things that I did and implemented that allowed me to feel more confident in myself when I took that step, you know, getting dialed in on my, my routine and my, my calendar and, and the things that I did on a daily basis those were all a key component to getting me where I am now. And so I knew that I just wanted to share those things with others because it's, like I said, I didn't do anything special. I just did the work and and made a few little tweaks along the way. And so I I think sharing that with others that can relate to my situation, it will help them become a better version of themselves. Absolutely. And you know what? We all go through that. And I feel like in life, we go through that probably three times of 
what do I want to do now? You know, I've accomplished this. What is my next, my next venture that I need to do? And so I feel like that book will resonate to a lot of people because it's everybody goes through it. Um, so dive in a little bit deep on your podcast, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, for sure. So one of the things that I did when I started this like personal development journey, um, it was kind of a combination of wanting to lose weight, but also knowing that I kind of needed to get my mindset right. So I used to just get up early and go walking every day. And when I would go walk, I'd listen to like audio books or I'd listen to like YouTube, like Ed Milet, Jim Rohn, Les Brown, you know, all those kind of guys, Ryan Stuman. And I, I love that morning motivation, just like hearing those positive words and kind of like filling my head with that early in the day was really powerful for me. And so what I ended up doing is like every morning I would listen to those things and I'd kind of get this like the spark, right? I'd hear something that really stood out to me. And so I kind of re purpose that quote in my own way on Facebook. And that was kind of like the first thing I would post every day was like something motivation and positive. Cause I knew first of all, the people who were following me mm -hmm. uh, wanted, they were kind of in the same boat. They needed something positive to start their day. And so I just started listening for those messages and the words that I heard in the morning and then kind of just sharing my own version of something that stood out to me. And so I've been doing that every day at 6 a.m., pretty much like clockwork for the last three years. When I started the podcast, I went, well, there are other people that need that same message, right? Like, I don't necessarily want to listen to the sound of my own voice. I don't know if anybody listening feels that way, but like, it's kind of like nails on a chalkboard, yeah. right? <laughs> it's hard to go back and listen to your own content. But there are people that like my message. There are people that like the things that I talk about. And so what I do now is I go back and I look at those quotes and I kind of think to myself, like, why was I, why was that important to me? What really is the extended message outside of the two or three sentences that are here. Like, what's the background behind that? And so I basically, I'll go back, I'll read those old quotes, and I'll spend two or three minutes really just kind of diving deeper on the thought behind that, that quote. And then I put that out five days a week to kind of get people fired up, right? Hey, here's three or four minutes of like motivation to get you fired up for the day, because motivation doesn't last. So like, just a little, little energy shot to get you going, right? And then I just do that a few times a week, Monday through Friday. And then it, it's really just about sharing that message. And, you know, it's cool because it started, I had maybe one or two people a day that would listen. And now we're getting to a point where we have thousands of downloads every month. And it, again, it's just about sharing the things that have worked well for me with other people, because not everybody's going to like it. But again, if I can help one person or two people or three people find a message that helps them go out and do something great with their day, like, ripple effect to me. I know big picture. I'm making a big impact in the world. Absolutely. You know, one little thing, it's just those one little steps that lead to huge steps in the end. Um, so before we end, I always ask everybody, I want a memory in your mind that you remember of owning your shit moment. The one thing that sticks out in your brain about, oh, fuck, I had to own my shit at that one point. Do you know what that is? I mean, of the many. I know, right? We all have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I have um, done. <laughs> truthfully, it was getting clarity with Kayla, my wife, and what had, you know, like, I went on that entrepreneurial journey, and I kind of went head down and didn't really think mm -hmm. about anybody or, but myself. And so her and I had to go through some hard times where we came to a head and had a real, had a real deep conversation of like, yo, man, you're doing all this and that's great. But if your family's not here to support you because you've forgotten about them, then what's it all for? And so that was like a real deep moment that I had to have and, and kind of get clear of like, yo, dummy, like, yeah, you're fucking successful and you're crushing it, but it doesn't mean anything if you're not remembering why you're doing it to begin with. Because you can do the lip service of saying, oh, I'm building a legacy. I'm doing this for my family. But if you're not actually there for your family, it's fucking pointless. And so I think that was probably one of the biggest like own your shit moments is just having to understand that it is OK to turn off and, and be there with your family because dummy it's, it's your family that's the whole point right if all of this shit was gone tomorrow they're gonna be there for you hell or high water so don't fucking forget that thank you i i do think that is a more crucial uh thing that is um 
it needs to get out more because I think a lot of entrepreneurs love the journey of being an entrepreneur and being busy, but they don't realize that they have to uh, step back and enjoy their partners and do things with their partners and their family. Um, that's huge. That's one thing that um, I'm actually in 2022. Um, I'm going to speak a lot about. That is something that I felt has been my passion that I need to speak on and um, relationships and finding your perfect mate and, you know, being your alpha female by owning, um, owning your, your femininity and a masculine relationship. Right. And so I feel like that's huge for a lot of us, you know? So thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I appreciate it's, it's one of those things that was really hard to go through for both of us. And and my wife is very much an alpha female too. She, I mean, you know, she's a bad B. And so like, it, it was hard to see that I had failed her in that sense. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it was important to have that conversation because now once we were able to be like, okay, this is where we're at, this is where we're going. Right. Mm-hmm. And so we had a chance to work on that and, and do yeah. it together. And that's, yeah. like you said, it's very, very important to to recognize that. It is, you know, um, I'll share something which is totally off the subject and it's not, I mean, I guess this show is not about me, but um, Kevin, I I was going to have a baby shower here for my son and um, I was in a really bad marriage with his dad and very, very abusive and very abusive to my son. And um, I was like, no, we, we always do things together. His dad always comes because we have to show that for our children and we have to show that we all get along. And that's just how it was raised. And he put his foot down and he said, that man is not allowed in my home. He is not coming in my home. And I'm like, well, you're very selfish. You're not thinking of Gabriel. This is about Gabriel. And it was like an argument. And I sat back for a minute and he came to me and he said, listen, he was mean to you. He was mean to Gabriel. I am protecting something that you are not protecting. I am putting my foot down. Nobody is to treat you that way. And it was like, I sat in that for a minute and I was like, oh shit. Like, I didn't realize it that way. I was just thinking you're, you know, you're selfish. You're being this way. And he's not. And it's the thing of communication. And I feel like a lot of people really need to sit down and it's that communication to realize the other person's point of view. Um, But that was my aha moment. (laughs) It's, it's hard to see things from someone else's perspective, mm-hmm. right? And, th- and that's why it's so important to have that trust and to have that open communication with the people that you surround yourself with, whether it's a spouse or a partner or, you know, people in your business. Like if you can't have that trust and you can't have that communication, you're basically doomed to fail. And so it's it's an ever evolving thing, right? It's, it's always an ebb and a flow. But uh, if you know that your focus is togetherness and, and that's kind of what you decide, yeah. And when you come to decision time, you can kind of, like you said, take that step back and say, okay, why does this person, say, you know, why is, why are they saying it this way? Why are they approaching it this way? And what am I not seeing? Yeah. And that vulnerability is, is really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, man, I'm, I, I'm very happy that you sat with me today and we chatted. So thank you. I'm I appreciate grateful you. to be here. I appreciate I you. I appreciate you very much. Just know that. And um, he does amazing fucking things. And then on top of that, there's something else coming out. So you guys have to stay tuned. And I'm going to put all of his all of his tags and IGs and everything in there so you can follow him, see what he's doing. Um, put down his podcast. Uh, check out because he has more things to come. And uh, I can't wait to see where you're going to be in another, gosh, two to three years. It's going to be phenomenal. So um I praise you. You're doing awesome. You, you're doing an amazing job. So thank you, Jen. I appreciate and you. I, I, I'm proud to be next to you. So thank you. Yeah, we mutual. Okay. Well, with that, thank you. Please follow. Please rate review. I'm going to share this when this launches and give you all the lowdown on Druby. Um, and not the bad shit. I'll give you the good shit. Um, <laughs> give it all. That's what makes yeah. it fun. Yeah. Okay. Well, I get to see you next week. So right. um, we'll thank you. Soon. Okay. Have an awesome day. You too. Later.